Processing and analyzing time series data, that is, data points indexed by regular intervals of time, has been a multi-billion dollar business in the manufacturing and industrial sectors since the 1980s. Recently though, industrial time series data has seen renewed interest from investors and companies. That's because time series data is the basis of nearly all forecasting, signal processing and control engineering, pattern recognition, anomaly detection, and even predicting machine part failure. However, with many thousands of petabytes of data produced annually by an IoT or sensor-rich industrial environment, being able to store and analyze an organization's time series data efficiently presents a significant challenge. To meet the growing demand, cloud providers such as AWS have developed deployment templates which will connect the organization's on-premises environment with a cloud-based ingestion and analysis platform. However, before creating your industrial time series data connector on AWS or another cloud platform, it is necessary to understand and address any potential security issues. The best and most effective way to understand the relevant threats and necessary security mitigations associated with creating an AWS industrial time series data connector is to threat model the full environment with Threat Modeler, your AWS technology partner for threat modeling. Out of the box, Threat Modeler comes with a complete AWS component library with AWS specific threats and security requirements pre mapped. For this video, we'll create our threat model based on the AWS reference architecture for an industrial time series data connector. We'll start our threat model with a blank diagram in Canvas. We're going to show the Linux bastion starting with a Linux component. Linux will be deployed on a virtual machine. We can show this by the use of a container. Containers are a special type of group in Threat Modeler in that they are defined by an architectural component. To do so, with the item selected, click Group in the Diagramming Toolbar. The default group type is a collection. To change this, right-click the group and, from the pop-up menu, choose Container. In the Defining Component dialog box, start typing the name of the desired component and select it when it appears. Our virtual machine will have access to an Elastic Block Store, and these will be deployed in an EC2. Which will be part of an auto scaling group. We'll have a couple of connector services, also deployed within an auto scaling group. Our recommended architecture calls for a NAT gateway and an Elastic IP service. These are the components for our public subnet. We can show the subnet as a trust boundary in a manner very similar to creating a container. In our private subnet, we'll have a management console. The console will be deployed with an auto scaling group. and a communication worker, also deployed within an auto-scaling group. And the private subnet will have an S3 endpoint. The subnets will be deployed within an availability zone We can quickly create a second availability zone by copying this one To do so with the group selected click copy in the diagramming toolbar and then click paste We can rename the new availability zone for clarity and to save space in the canvas we can minimize the new zone Traffic between the zones will be balanced with an elastic load balancer. Together, the diagrammed items comprise our VPC architecture.
Our connector platform will ingest our on-premises data through a Kinesis data stream service and a Firehose service. We'll index the incoming data in an Elasticsearch service and store it in a bucket. We'll employ an Athena instance to perform interactive queries on the data. And a Lambda service will clean up the Elasticsearch index after a designated time. The data and the analysis outputs will be stored in an S3 service. Per the recommended architecture, our processed data will be accessible through a Firehose and a Data Analytics service. We'll monitor our platform with a CloudWatch service. Our backend communication workers can query the stored data through a simple query service. And, per the recommended architecture, we'll have a relational database to store the search results. Together, these components comprise the architecture of our AWS regions. Finally, we should show our on-premises managed feed server and our assets structure server. We'll contain these servers within a corporate network trust boundary. Now that all the architectural components and groups are added to the diagram in Canvas, the next step is to add the appropriate communication links. This is very easy to do in Threat Modeler. Simply click on a components icon and drag an arrow to another icon. When the click is released, Threat Modeler automatically adds a communication link. The default protocol is HTTPS. We can change this by right clicking the link and from the pop up checkbox list, selecting the desired protocols. and deselecting any not wanted. Inasmuch as this is a cloud-based platform, we'll use the default protocol for the remaining links. And with that, the threat model for our industrial time series data connector is complete. By navigating the overview page, we can see that threat model has automatically identified 45 threats, and 159 mitigating security requirements. By opening a threat group, we can get more information about the threat's source, statuses, and risks. By clicking on an individual threat, we can get detailed information on the threat, including any relevant threat intelligence. It took me, a non-security expert, about 30 minutes to create this threat model for our AWS Industrial Time Series Data Connector in Threat Modeler. If you'd like to learn more about threat modeling your AWS deployments, please visit us on the web at www.threatmodeler.com. And while you're there, be sure to schedule a live presentation. And of course, please take a moment to subscribe to the Threat Modeler YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.